We got married fairly young and we both just decided for yeah. many reasons we didn't want kids. Okay. And then at some point we heard the acronym DINK and I think just really fell in love with it. There are more Americans that are deciding not to have children and it's purposeful. Yeah, so do they talk about how much money they owe in student loans, though? Because I think that usually that's a factor. This new trend has led to the rise of a new type of household, more commonly referred to as dinks. Dual income, no kids. Oh yeah, dual income, no kids. That's perfect for us. That's absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Children are the death of net worth. Pretty crude, uh, but honestly very true. Well, it's yeah, it is true. No, that, that's that's accurate. Yeah. Household configuration of dual income partners living alone without children is on the rise. In 2022, it was around 43%. Households were dual income without children in 2022. Holy shit, that sounds really bad, man. That's really, really fucking bad. Because, like, we're, like... Is it, are we going to have a population collapse? I mean, like, Japan is having this problem. Fuck. Households, and that's about a 7% increase from a decade previously. In 2022, 43% of Americans surveyed said they'd want to get married. But just a little more than a quarter said they were sure about wanting children. At the term What's this here? 56% said they didn't want to have kids? That's crazy. Oh my God. That sounds really bad. Now, like, I, I think that maybe it's like, so I think about how does this, because like, if you ask people that are 21, most people don't have kids at 21 anymore, right? Most people have kids between like 27 to like 40. I would say somewhere around there, 27 to 37. And so... If you ask a lot of young, young people, then, yeah, I think that most of them would say no because they're not really in that position in life to, to want to have kids. So it depends on how this poll is done, but that's still a very, very high percentage. It says in the future, though, yeah, but I don't think that a 20-year-old is going to have the introspection and the capacity to understand what they're really going to want in the future. Like, whenever I was 21, I felt amazing playing video games all day, doing literally nothing. And then some point around, like, I don't know, 24 or 25, I felt like, man, maybe I'm wasting my fucking life. And I still kept doing it, but I didn't enjoy it as much. You know? So, yeah, no, I think it happens. Like, it does. Wanting children. The term dink is becoming more prominent now because of financial challenges. Yeah, and there they it see is. children the as just another financial challenge that yeah. maybe they, they don't want to take on. So what's it like to live with a dual income and no children? And will it be the future of American households? Of course it's not going to be the future of American households because that would kind of, that would be a problem that would work itself out pretty fast, huh? Like, you know, like that. it's kind of like a self-correcting problem. According to a 2023 survey of Dinks, finance played a major role in their decision exactly. to not have children. Yeah, there it is. That's the More reason. than a quarter of respondents said no, they... No, these people have an... Uh, oh my God, they have an Apple laptop? Either they have $100,000 in student loans or they don't have any money in student loans. I feel like there's no in-between aren't able to financially support a child yeah. at the moment. When we advise clients about having children, we honestly don't even give them the full real details and the real numbers. It's one it's of those of things, money. if you actually see the math of it all, it might make you decide to not have children. Well, there's it also like, yeah, it's like, it's a quarter mil, something like that. That's what I heard. Um, and uh, it probably is going to be more by the time the kid's an adult, you know, it'd probably be like, 400k something like that maybe even more uh and, and it's also like a lot of lost opportunities right it's like if you're if you're grinding like let's say like you're streaming like how many of you guys do we know streamers or people that did youtube who after they had a kid they slowed down a lot 
and like that's that's a good thing like it shouldn't be looked at like oh you fell off no that's good but the difference is that whenever you are just barely making it or you're ju you're getting by and then you slow down well now you're not getting by anymore the family an estimated three hundred and ten thousand six hundred five dollars to raise I, a I child thought, born in 2015 wow. to age 18. Fucking inflation. For higher future inflation. I thought it was a quarter and mil. That doesn't even include the cost of college. So if you look at inflation it within the child care market, it surpasses general overall inflation within uh, child care prices rising. Or, why? I mean, some couples are contemplating having children at the same time that they're still paying off student loans that they incurred when See, they were bro, that's what it's about. 18 to 22 years old. One of my very closest friends, uh, she's been struggling with the reality that the take-home pay she makes is about equal to what childcare would be. That's a really hard position to be in. Seeing our friends really yep. struggle with that balancing act has, I think, made me appreciate the flexibility that we have financially because we don't have children. Besides saving on childcare, Dinks can also fully reap the benefits of combining their finances. To look at both of our incomes coming in and see how we're able to handle all of that because we don't have extra finances with a child, it's much more comfortable. We get to focus more on the things that we want to do and, and saving a lot of that money for the future and worry less about the day-to-day the -day finances of the house and our bills. Money isn't the only- Yeah, it shouldn't be like that though. You know, it's sad. What future? Yeah, there's really- Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. But um, people can 100% afford a kid. Well, maybe they can. I, I think that a lot of the people that don't have kids- um, it's so selfish. No, it's not. I think that if you don't want to have kids, you shouldn't have kids. Yeah, a hundred percent. Why, why would you want somebody who doesn't want to have a kid to have a kid? Like that's up to them. It's their own decision. The expense that Dinks can save on. The free time is actually one of the biggest things for me. So we built me a little office slash bedroom out here. We definitely have some more expensive hobbies. I mm. uh, build me. Let me look at that. Oh, wow. That's a big one. Okay. Yeah. This guy's serious. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. There it is. We definitely have some more expensive hobbies. Yeah. I uh, build mechanical keyboards, like uh, computer keyboards in my spare time. Cool. And just parts and stuff for that can be very expensive. Not having children has given us the freedom to pursue other things. Remodeling our home, um, I'm a beekeeper. What the fuck? I'm really handy and I like doing stuff around the house. I wouldn't have the time to just do that after work if I feel like it, if I had, you know, a child to care for. True. He's right. Fewer expenses leave He's things right. with more disposable income to play with. Disposable income is power, it's stability, and for many couples, it's security. The security that having, you know, six months of income saved for emergencies gives you, that security was so helpful to us during COVID when I was out of work for six months. Have like a smaller tractor. So I feel like even when this circumstance, this is usually a example of people not wanting to have kids as an outcome of finances. I think even in this circumstance, right? Because they're like, well, we almost got fucked up and now we don't want to do it. The government hates these people. Kids are super expensive. Yeah, and it, it's sad, man. It really is sad. Style next year, we're gonna get a zero. We have more tolerance. Because, like, I mean, really, the dude spending, like, how much money is it for one of those mechanical keyboards? Like, how much money is he really spending on that? N probably not that much. Right? It, this isn't like, yeah, 300 like a thousand dollars, something like that. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not seeing it to be, like, the same price as a kid. We force people to have kids and then not even help pay for it? Well, I'm not, I mean, I'm not doing that.
I call bullshit. Teaching your kids your hobbies is the most rewarding thing as a father. I love the fact that my kids love Pokemon, TCG, and video games. Yeah, but like you can't ever... Exp this is the problem that a lot of people have. Is that they always want other people to have the same values as them. There are some people that just don't feel that way. And they don't want to do that. And it's not wrong. Well, biologically, you could say it is, because if everybody thought like that, that would kind of, you know, that would work itself out pretty quick. Um, but, you know, it, it's still their choice. That guy's hair. No, don't let him fool you. This hairline is almost as bad as mine. Okay, like, I, it, it's almost as bad as mine. Like, no, he does the same thing. It's just since he has lighter hair, it doesn't look as bad. Yeah, look at that, bro. Like, that is a fucking... Bro, that is almost a right triangle. Like, you could you could take this angle right here, and you could put it on, like, one of fucking uh, Da Vinci's different pictures of, like, the man with his arms. Like, that could absolutely be one of the li little angles. For chaos. Let's be real. <laughs> because of our savings... Our new savings goal, which is like our See? shoot for the uh -huh. stars and hit the moon, kind of, is saving four grand a month. According That's to a lot of money. Data, Dinks can save 9% more for retirement. That's sa year. saving $4,000 a month is, is big. That's huge. Compared to dual income couples with children. Another 2021 study found that childless adults aged 55 and older had a personal median net worth of $153,900, mm -hmm. compared to $130,400. I'm actually bio. surprised the difference isn't larger, especially considering, you know, the way like interest, compounding interest and stuff like that works. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not more. Logical parents. If you have a dollar and if you have to choose how to use it, a dink can prioritize savings, retirement, cream. investments, both in the equities market and ice as well cream. As things like real estate or second yeah. properties. See, the hardest part of investing is just having the cash to do it. And so yeah. when you don't have your cash going to expenses, that's one that thing that, uh, you know, if you're rich, you can buy more money. Poor people can't do that. It's expensive to be poor. That are related to children, that cash can go into those investment goals. We started investing in our early 20s. That's good. I feel really safe because we have this strong nest egg of ETFs that are accessible and fairly liquid. And then we also have our long-term savings, which are, you know, tied up in IRAs. We can choose what our aging years look like because we've saved to plan for that eventuality. It is well documented that the younger you are when you start your savings and your retirement portfolio, the better off you are in the long run in terms of aggregate savings and your ability to accrue savings and wealth. Just take the $310,605. Yeah, there's a lot of numbers and like data and like extrapolation that people do for like how much more money you would have if you started saving at like 18 versus 25 versus 30 versus 35. Uh, long story short, it's best to start saving as early as possible. It would take for a middle income married family to raise a child. Yeah. While child expenses can vary significantly by age. Isn't that patient, crazy? Who would have expected that? That could easily represent more than $15,000 in otherwise investable funds per year. Yep. Consider the power of annually compounding interest. There it is. And that $15,000 yep. per year can grow to more than $500,000 in just 18 years, assuming 7% annual returns. This Jesus. Next egg could also help Dinks secure more assets for themselves. Yep. Dual earner adults living together who both have jobs and have been saving are really able to put um, a heftier, relatively large down payment on a home, um, which then reduces their monthly mortgage and has all of these other yep. benefits. It's, you're paying less interest over the long run. I was well, that's fortunate. not always a good idea, assuming that the uh, interest rate on the mortgage is lower uh, or sorry, is higher. Or yeah, or, or is lower than like your market return. Like that's not always a good idea. 
but generally it is. It's, it's just it's just, it's very simple math. Have a good little nest egg gifted to me by my grandparents, um, and that helped us buy our first house. But then from there, living in that house, lucky, living in a place lucky. with a lower cost of living like yeah. Utah, having dual income helped us build all this savings so that when we sold that home and moved to Massachusetts, we had an even larger nest egg that allowed us to buy a more expensive home in a higher cost. Oh, of it's living. not trust fund or anything like that. Cheaties. No, no. I mean, there's a lot of people that that inherit things from their family. Like this is not an uncommon thing that people inherit things from their family. Like, that's not crazy, is it? Damn. Thing area. I'm not totally sure where we would be if we had a child as well. That extends beyond just purchasing a home. There are lots of big item, big ticket investments that we um, tend to make earlier on in adulthood to the extent that we- Like an expensive car that will depreciate in value the moment that you drive it off the dealership. And the insurance for it is extremely high, so you have to uh, pay it. And then you also have to make a car payment every month. Uh, yeah, you have to remember that. Like if I had a hundred million dollars, I probably would still not buy a Lamborghini. Still wouldn't do it. It's a waste of money. I would only do it if I could... I would, I would do it and I would never drive it. I would, like, buy one from, like, Bugatti or, like, Rolls-Royce, like, one of the ones that will appreciate in value based off of, like, the model. And, and then I'll just, like, hire somebody to, like, take care of it. And so it's like, I'm not really buying a car. I'm just buying an investment vehicle, like, literally. Can pay as much of it as possible good ROI. Front that does I have a rippling benefit it's for not what us I do, as we really, age. But like, if I wanted to, I would. Excuse me, is that what but he the does? The rise of dinks isn't such great news for the economy as a whole. Yeah. Historically, lower birth rates have been associated with slower economic growth. Who could have ever and guessed that? And critical social programs such as social security depend heavily on population growth. We shouldn't strive to have a generation of young adults that are not reproducing. That would not be he healthy for society. No. It wouldn't be healthy for the economy. Um, it wouldn't be healthy for us as we age. Um, yeah. So there are a lot of reasons why we do want to take investments in the next generation seriously. For Dinks, the biggest challenges are often not financial. And I think we freaked a lot. This of is true, is that there's a lot of people, and this is what I said before, there are people who are, con they are in need of constant approval of their life decisions. They constantly need somebody to tell them that the thing that you're doing is the right thing. And whenever other people are doing a different thing and they seem to be happy, these people constantly try to find different weaknesses and like, oh, well, you're not really happy. Oh, well, it's not really like that. This is the biggest fucking insecurity ever. There are plenty of people that do things that are totally different than you that are completely fucking happy. Like, it's just, again, it's just, it's insecurity, I think. It's insecurity and people are not confident in their decisions people out when we were just a young married couple and that was all there was no baby afterwards i had family members asking if something was wrong because it's been five years of a young healthy couple not producing a child i think that they're well i mean yeah of course they're gonna wonder that because usually most people have kids and then whenever you're not doing it, people are going to wonder, why aren't you doing it? Is it really surprising that people ask you about, are you doing the thing that guarantees the continuation of our existence? I mean, like, of course, you're going to have aunts and uncles at Thanksgiving asking you about this. This is normal. Think about it from their perspective. Are they supposed to know every life decision that you're making? Maybe you've changed your mind. Jesus Christ. Like, it's just, oh my God.
a self-care aspect that is minimized oh, self when you're oh, God, a dink. Self-care, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I gotta hear about this shit again. All right, here we go. Let's do it. So there are many mom groups or, you know, daddy, daughter dances. Yeah. There aren't groups for, hey, I'm a professional woman and I just want to go home There's and read a plenty book. of groups for single men. They're called World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Final Fantasy, and let me think. I don't know. Escape from Tarkov. If you want to find a bunch of men that don't have kids, just go online. And take care of myself tonight. I think on the other side of that, there can be times where in certain circumstances and circles, it's harder to make friends. There is also the potential for more financial responsibility from other family members. There could be additional pressure as dinks get older for people within their family to assume that they can take care of certain obligations. For example, if you have an aging parent, dinks might be the ones that are relied upon because it's presumed you have disposable income or you have disposable time to take on these responsibilities. As it should be. Yep. That's right. According to experts, the number one advice for dinks is to prioritize savings. And, and it sucks. It does. It fucking sucks dick. Oh my god. I had to deal with that with my mom. Oh fuck, it was awful. But you gotta do it. That's just how it is. Clear goals for the future. If anybody is considering becoming a dink, as a financial planner, I highly recommend that strategy. I recommend sure, it to my yeah. clients. When my clients tell me that's an intentional choice they're gonna make, I am a big fan of it. With that disposable income, make a budget. How do you wanna spend it? Make sure you put aside some money for fun, but also make sure you put aside some money for investments and they can be traditional or non-traditional investments and then revisit it annually to make sure it still makes sense. I think if you are Smart. considering yeah. not having children in your life, make sure your partner is on the same page as you yeah. and that you have confidence in that value in isolation without your partner too. Yeah. Don't go into the dink lifestyle just like, oh, I don't have kids so I just have more money and can do whatever. It still takes the work of like planning for your future, putting money away. If you're not going to have kids, Make sure you still save money for your future because the world is a weird place. Well, right? the reason why people don't have kids is because they can't save the money in the first place to have the kids. So it's hard to really do that. But he's right. Yeah, for sure. Now, and who knows what it's going to be like in another 30, 40 years when we go to retire. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I... I feel like this is kind of sad, and it's not sad that they want to do it. I think people can do what they want to do. That's fine. It's their life, their decision. If it makes them happy, then they should do it. But the sad part is that people feel like they have to do it. And like even with like their story, I mean, they, they act like it's a lifestyle choice, but then whenever they explain their background, it seems like this is something that was led on by financial anxiety during COVID. Right? It doesn't, this doesn't seem like this is an internal personal choice. Like if they had $10 million, $50 million, would this decision be the same? And I think that if you ask these people, they would probably say, yeah, but for how long? And maybe they would say, yeah, forever. Because of course, there's going to be people that feel that way. But I think the biggest thing that moves the needle for people is money. And it's also the fact that at least here in the U.S., you get almost no support if you have kids, at least compared to what you get in certain places in Europe. So, yeah, it's not a surprise that people aren't having kids. And it's also a big problem is you look at it from the idiocracy perspective. It's the people that are financially literate that aren't having kids because they realize, holy fuck, we don't have the money for this. Meanwhile, you've got Cletus and fucking, uh, you know, some, some, his girlfriend named Cadillac that have nine fucking kids living in one trailer. <laughs> and they're going to be running the fucking world. Oh my God. Hoorah, brother. That's right. 
<laughs> three years later. Yeah, I've worked at Cadillac. I can't. No, it's it's not Cadillac with a C. It's Cadillac with a K. I went to I went to high school with a couple of them. All right, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're halfway to ten kids already. Holy fuck, man! Some people. My, my school had a daycare in it. All right, like that's just, that's where we were at, next to a police station. But yeah, I think a lot of people don't have kids. It's pretty fucking simple. It's because they don't have the money to have kids. And they have the financial literacy to understand that. And they know they can't afford it. It's a fucking disaster. And I don't think people are seeing it. Like, we're not having the same problem that Japan is having or that China is starting to have. But we will. Oh, we will. Certain places in Europe are having this problem, too. Let's see here. I like to disagree. I have six kids, one income house, and I'm married, but I've been financially responsible, though. How much money you make? What's your uh, what, what's your uh, yearly salary? Yeah, what's your uh, what's your yearly salary? Congrats, by the way. That's great. I'm happy for you. Six kids. Yeah, he probably plays Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's the target audience for Diablo 4. Yeah, how, how much you make a year? You're always hard, 60k? Damn, bro, like, that's rough. Like, are you good? Like, is, like, really? Like, are you, well, like, is there, like, a commission bonus? Like, you're saying that, like, your fucking, your W-2 says 60k. Or your 1040 says 60k. We're all like, what do you mean? That's hard. Play WoW. Eight people on $60,000. That is incredible. I can't imagine that, dude. I bet that's like, because I would think that's like a huge struggle. Yeah. I, I, where does he live, though? You think maybe, yeah, he could live in a bumfuck state. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe he inherited a house, and so he doesn't have to pay for a house. Like, yeah, like, well, what about that? Buffalo, New York, I rent? Jesus. Bro, somebody needs to, like, yeah, like, yeah, if you don't know how to spend money, apparently this guy, either he's a great liar or he's really fucking good with money. I don't know which one. Or, yeah, I, I'm not sure. It doesn't add up. I, I mean, to me, it doesn't. But if it does, that's pretty impressive, man. My dad made 100 k a year supporting me basically alone and was struggling. We don't live in Cali or New York. Yeah, I mean, there are people that are bad with money, too, though. I think if you're making 100 k and you're struggling and you're not in San Francisco or something, you need to evaluate your finances. You do. You need to look at what you're doing with your money. Because I think you're wasting it. Yeah, I mean, like, poverty doesn't realize it? Well, I don't know. I mean, like, the thing is, people that live in poverty in the U.S., let's be honest, live better than a lot of people in the world. Like, it's, like, w w poverty here is not poverty in many places in the world. How? Well, just go watch a video about what it's like being poor in India or what it's like being poor in Russia. Or what it's like being poor in Africa, for example, or South America. Just go look it up. Asia, yeah, a lot of places in Asia too. It's the most basic thing I ever said. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and the same thing with Europe. Europe, is, some places in Europe are really good, some aren't. You know, it depends. It's a mixed bag, a lot of different countries. But yeah, I figured I'd watch this video and talk about it a bit. The poverty floor is higher. It's still not an excuse to miss basic shit like healthcare. Um, you know what's kind of funny about that is that. Healthcare costs, you know who they really fuck? They really fuck people that are in the middle class. Because if you're in a, uh, if you're like, let's say, really, really poor, you just go to the fucking emergency room. Like, that's what we would do. Like, back in the day, whenever, um, what do you call it? Whenever my mom would have a problem, I'd just take her to the emergency room. They say, you owe us this much money. We're like, okay. And, and, yeah, that's it. And so, yeah, it really hurts the lower middle class because they're the ones that can't qualify for benefits and they have enough disposable income that it can be used. Then, like, you know, uh, like these companies can use leverage to, like, remove that income from them. It's problematic. It very much is. But for very poor people, uh, health care is, is in a lot. I would not. I'm not. I was about to say just fine, which is not true. 
Uh, but healthcare is not as sparse as you might imagine. You just go to the emergency room. And what, what are they going to tell you to leave? How's her credit? Well, uh, before she passed, I told her she owed over $100,000. And I told her, don't pay it. You're never going to have to worry about it. She never did. <laughs> she never did. <laughs> Fuck them. Uh, in my opinion, I think credit cards are unethical. I, I don't know if I can say unethical. Because you do sign the contract knowing what you're getting into. I don't like credit cards. And anytime people scam credit cards, I don't care. Predatory? But how, though? I think predatory should only be used whenever you're talking about a person going into uh, a transaction without the full information of the transaction. Yeah, they give people larger limits for no reason. Yeah, but it's still the person's account. The person should be held accountable for either, like, using that limit or not. I mean, like, that's them spending the money. Like, I don't, I, I think that's bullshit, man. It's the company's responsibility that they give you money that you're spending that you shouldn't spend. No, fuck that. That's your responsibility. But I still think credit cards are fucking scams. I don't think, uh, uh, I, I, I've never had a credit card. I don't have any credit score as far as I know. And if I do, it's very low. Uh, I never want to have a credit score. I never want to have a credit card. Uh, I've always bought everything in cash, even whenever I had no money. And if I didn't have the money to buy it, I couldn't afford it. And I would just save the money myself. And uh, my dad has suggested for me to get a credit card and just pay it off every month. That's what he's been doing for the last 40 years or actually probably 50 years or 60 years now. And, uh, you know, and just basically he's, he looks at it as like I'm scamming them. And he kind of is. But um, I'm still just not a fan. Do you feel like the whole system is there to scam you? I, I think that it operates at the expense of people more than for the benefit of them. How about pay later in your opinion? Pay later in your opinion? It's so, like, I think all of these things are bad. Like pay later, all of this kind of stuff. I, I, I don't think any of this is good, but I also don't think it's like necessarily immoral because really you're letting stupid people make decisions. Well, allowing a stupid person to make a decision isn't exploiting them. Just stop being stupid. It's that simple. How? Educate yourself. Learn about interest. These things are easy to understand. And there are plenty of resources online available for free that will teach you how to understand it better than any community college even will. There are MIT lectures about things. There is no excuse for financial literacy. There are compelling reasons for it and understandable reasons, but no excuses. You live in an age of information. You can learn anything that you want. Ignorance is always voluntary.